Dutton. Win a winner, turkey dinner. Hi, I'm Kelly Riley, and I play Beth Dutton on Yellowstone. You can't talk to me like that. No? You better have a big pistol in that purse. I do. It's called my name. Beth Dutton, what's yours? <coughs> People call me Beth. They'll come to me and they'll be uh, like wanting to high five me or <laughs> or start a fight. <laughs> it's really interesting how people believe that you're your character. I'm gonna stab you in the eye with this book. This is the first time I've talked about it properly. It's such a personal process as well. And people to hear me talk about her, I think is sort of um, different as well because they have such a unique idea of who she is. But this character is a beast. I am the rock therapists break themselves against. One thing I love about Yellowstone and Beth and the casting is that Taylor Sheridan has said that he knew you were Beth the minute he saw you in that tape. Well, I didn't know I was Beth. <laughs> um, it took me a while to really find her. I mean, it's like she's like stepping into a sports car. It was like, how, how do I go from naught to 100 in three seconds? And when I first met him, I hadn't found her yet. So um, I don't, I'm not sure what he saw. I do remember having a wobble moment where I think where I thought, I, I don't know if I can, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pull this off. Because um, it is such a tremendously complicated role. I wasn't sure if I was the right person for it. And then he just, he would fill my head. He would call me up at midnight and be like, here, here, here's what you need to know about Beth. And he, I would, I have notebooks and journals, like literally I would just be writing everything down. He would tell me. I still have them. What do you want? To make a scene. You ready to watch that happen? Beth is Taylor's like creation. And I, and, and all I ever wanted to do was um, was was show him that I could do it and make her real for him um, because it is such a bold, brave character. I've made two decisions in my life based on fear. And they cost me everything. I remember sitting down and doing rehearsals and, I, and I'm and i certainly shyer than Beth and certainly took me a while to find my own way into owning that confidence. I remember saying to him, I'm, I'm going off a cliff with her and I and he went, you bet, and I'm going to push you off that cliff. And I just remember thinking, all right, I'm in for a ride here. And it's been so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, so that audition and, and just what he saw in me, I have no idea. But I do remember once I got it, okay. I got it. Nah, not for me. When it comes to the accent in particular, how did you master that? Well, it's funny, I mean, I work with a dialect coach who helps me and that's just a bit of hard grind, just sitting at home, just, you know, just going over and over and over it. I live in America now, so it, it, it's, I'm hearing it all the time. Um, but the first season when I first played Beth, I didn't want anyone to know that I wasn't American. I mean, people knew, but not everyone knew, and all the crew didn't know. And it's not that I stayed in the accent, but I just didn't talk to anyone <laughs> unless I was playing Beth. That is destruction of personal property. Assault is next. You ready to see that? I didn't really want anyone to know that I was so far removed from her, mm. just personally, um, because if I came in and was just myself, yeah. uh, it sort of ruined the illusion. And I, there was something about it for me. It wasn't about trying to convince everybody else, but for myself, I just needed to, to really become her. I'm not going anywhere. Just tell me how to fight. And it was only until like season three did I start to hang out with everybody. You can ask them, like they, they, they probably thought I just didn't, I wasn't very friendly, but I was just, I just didn't want anyone to, uh, I didn't want the illusion um, to, to, to break for myself. So when the cameras were off, were you also still in Beth the Beast mode too? <laughs> no, I keep her locked up in a box <laughs> with a padlock. Um, I'm not joking. Yeah, it's four months of the year where I get to play her. It is like sort of going into battle. 
Yeah, I mean, she's tough. And then also the language that, um, that, that Taylor, how he writes her, uh, um, it's a mouthful. It's like really hard sentences um, to sort of like just say so easily and kill. What about the one-liners? They're the best. The best? Yeah, they're the best. I don't speak dipshit. You are the trailer park. I am the tornado. You bet on the wrong horse. These all get made into t-shirts. I actually got one for my mother-in-law, so she wears it sometimes. But yeah, no, it's, um, it's, it's, it's very strange how she sort of pierced the psyche of American women. And I, I'm not sure because I think she's such a monster and I love her. But she is, um, there, there's something about her that's really empowered a lot of women. Um, I think just being able to say those things without any fear of retribution, sort of any, you know, there's no, no one can come back at Beth um, better than, than her. I'm the bigger bear. What is your favorite part about playing Beth? It's the most challenging role I've ever played, ever. And um, I've played quite a few challenging ones. Uh, she's pretty thrilling. And there's just so many different aspects of her. And so I don't get to rest on my laurels and just roll into work. And I, I have to work really hard and um, prepare. And it's a challenge. And I, for me, I love the challenge of it. The sting never fades with me. She's a lot of fun to play, like those one-liners and stuff. Like there's two parts of Beth. There's the one that, you know, the, the sting never fades, Beth, that one. And then the one that is wanting to try and protect her father and the ranch and wants to find peace and is in love with the man. But she, there's like these two warring parts this season vying for her attention. And, um, and it feels like it was um, sort of on steroids this season. Love you. <laughs> After ruin a life. <laughs> the need for revenge that she carries in her, I mean, it's pretty dark. I mean, it's very dark. I feel like Beth this season was on the warpath with everybody. You're gonna run everything, aren't you? Everything. When you're shooting those intense scenes, for example, with Beth and Jamie and the way she speaks mm -hmm. to him, when the camera's cut, how do you get out of that? What's that like? A lot of those scenes are really difficult to play because they're so filled with pain. So they're they're pretty brutal to, to drop into. I want to see you be a man, Jamie. Stop. Huh? Be a man! Stop. Be a man! Stop. It's hard to talk about it, honestly, because it's hard for me to... I, when, I'm, when I'm playing her, I'm full in and then it's sort of like coming out and then I watch it and I'm, I don't even remember doing some of the, the scenes. I'm gonna kill you, Jamie. Yeah, I feel really bad for Jamie sometimes. I think the relationship with Jamie and Beth, it's so toxic. It's so full of betrayal um, and so full of pain for her. I didn't ask you for a fucking hysterectomy. But I think the reason why all of that exists is because she loved him. Do you ever think there's potential for that relationship to be healed? I don't know. Do you hope? What I hope is she will find some peace. Mm. And I think, I don't think you can find peace if you hold that much pain, if you haven't, if you haven't sort of dealt with some of those things. I'm something bad. You mentioned being full into her, mm -hmm. obviously emotionally, but physically now too. Beth mm -hmm. has a lot of trauma to her body yeah. after everything she's been through. She was blown up at the end of season three. Wait, I don't know what that is. Don't. She has a scar on her back. What is the transformation process like for you? When we had to do the, the burns on my back, um, that would take my calls were like three o'clock in the morning to be on set for seven. Abby, who does the special effects makeup, is phenomenal at her job. And she literally laid on every single burn. There were literally like 45 pieces of individual burns that she would paint on me. So it was a real artistry with it. I love when I'm Beth all bashed up. Like that's who she is. There is that sort of that warrior that's just in battle the whole time. And, and so the fact that she's getting scars, it just makes sense. 
talk to us a little bit about working with Cole and the relationship that you guys have that you're able to make Rip and Beth mm -hmm. what that is. If we didn't work together, um, there, would no, there wouldn't be any Rip and Beth. The relationship that is on the page, we're so lucky. You don't know what chemistry you're going to have with another actor, right? You just have no idea. And you also don't know what the audience are going to see. So we didn't know really until season two that that was becoming a thing. I remember the first time I saw you. So wild, so angry. God, you were beautiful. And because they're such hard asses, both of them in their own separate way, and then they come together and it's just, it's where they kind of lay down their weapons. And this relationship, it, it, it's so powerful because there's so much history to it. And for so many years, I think Beth resisted that relationship because of what happened to her. Um, so she kind of shut it down and shut it out. And then now you see her fully in. And this is just her guy, you know, and it's beautiful. You're the craziest person I've ever met in my life, you know that? It's only the things I love that die rip never me. Yeah. Come to think of it, I'm surprised you're still standing. And I just love how he loves her. One of my favorite scenes of all time was when he makes her breakfast in season three. You ever have fried bread? And how just simple an act of just kindness can just, would just set her into a very vulnerable place. And I don't think Beth lets herself be vulnerable very often. So for me, Cole provides a place for me as the actor and Beth as a character um, to soften. Um, and the passion that she has for him, I think is really beautiful. I love you. I see you at the house. I fuck you. All right, baby. And Cole and I work together as a team. Like, we're really good friends and we really respect one another. And we can really ask each other, we're like, is this working or is this not working? And he'll give me notes and I'll give him some sometimes. And we just help each other out because we are aware of of what, what we've got in our hands. Um, and it's very rare um, for something to be written so beautifully and for the audience to um, respond to it this way. So there is a responsibility to us, which sometimes can feel too heavy. It's just such a beautiful love story. Like, it's almost old fashioned. The only thing I ask is that you outlive me so I never have to live another day without you. Now we have Carter introduced into this dynamic. We're seeing a little bit more of a maternal side of Beth. Yeah. Hamburger helper. Made with hamburger this time. <laughs> How would you say his addition into their dynamic has kind of maybe changed things? Rip was Carter, you know, 30 years ago. So, um, and Beth recognized that straight away. You know, there's a kid who literally has nothing. His life has just fallen apart. And if she doesn't help him, you know, she knows what his future is. And don't let anyone outwork you. Ever. At the same time, these this is not Disney, right? So these are people who haven't been raised particularly gently themselves. It's not going to be a necessarily a kumbaya moment of, like, come to mama. And I, I also think Beth is guarded. There's a, there's a part of her heart that probably doesn't think she's capable of mothering. And also to open a heart to, to anyone is, is quite a big deal. So it, that's gonna be a slower burn than I think everybody may have wanted. I think there was like, oh, suddenly there's a kid in their life and they adopt it and it's all, and you get flavors of that. You get moments of those those moments of real happiness, yeah. genuine happiness. And I think family is everything to Beth. And I just think it's so nice to see Beth happy because I think that is where her happiness lies when she's not trying to, you know, destroy people. Actually, this is what makes her heart sing. This is what makes her, you know, really tick. This makes you happy, don't it? It does. It's nice to see her happy at the kitchen table too because a lot goes down at kitchen tables for Beth. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Beth turns into a sort of 14 year old, you know, hormonal child at that table. I mean, it's so full of ghosts for her. Um, and I think Taylor has such fun writing those scenes. Tantric, what's that? Mm -hmm. Don't encourage her. 
It focuses on the erogenous zones. What, erogenous zones? Mm -hmm. Just pouring gas on the fire rip. It's almost like she walks into this portal right. when she goes into the dining room. It's like going back and it's, you know, it, it's the reminder of everything that she's lost at that table. Everything that felt like real family to her. Her mother, who she it feels responsible for, for her death. Um, her brother, who's dead. And her father, who is, um, he's unable to just chill out in that room. And she hates it. This is every meal, Rip. This is where she gets her revenge. And this year it was so lovely, that scene where she's freaking out and doing what she normally does, and then Rip is like, well, what's the problem? There's another table right here. What's the problem? There's a table right here. Why don't we eat right here? What do you say? And she hadn't thought of that. So then suddenly moving that dynamic, <laughs> simply. I think that table's going to be set on fire one day by her because she just can't stand it. Life is plenty hard. You don't need to help it, you hear me? Obviously, this character is very personal to you. Yeah, the, I, I, I really feel Beth in my heart. So it's like, I know what she does for her father. I mean, she really is a martyr for him. She will, she says, I will, you know, die defending his dream, protecting his land. His dream is my Alamo. And, you know, if you look at that, really, I mean, there's some dysfunction in that, that's taking loyalty and devotion and love to, I think, something a little bit um, damaged. She feels responsible for the death of her mother, that terrible accident when she was a child. And, I mean, her mother even told her that this is, this is your fault, as she died. She did this. Let her undo it. I think there is some unconscious part of Beth really desperately trying to compensate for that loss. And she never will. Um, forgiveness is such a big thing with her. Uh, I don't think she can forgive herself for that. I'll work that shit out in therapy. And she's fighting so hard for him, and, 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 and everything she does is for him. No one's getting vengeance for what happened the, with the attack. No one's getting, getting even with that. She doesn't understand it. She wants to just chop them all up, you know, and it, it feels like he's letting it go. And when she says, um, you know, keep the kingdom or lose the kingdom, like that's what it is to her. And my loyalty is the one thing on this planet that you don't have to worry about. And it's so tricky too because when she takes it too far, especially with Summer, she gets fiercely protective, literally has a spat with Summer in the mm -hmm. kitchen over it. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? I think Summer is in such an easy target for Beth. Um, um, I mean, she's so savage to her. I, I, it's awful. <laughs> I spend a lot of time apologizing to the actors I work with. <laughs> I'm the bitch about to stab you in the stomach. I think there is a territorial aspect to her. Like I said, there's a sort of juvenile quality with her father. It's almost like she sort of stopped developing at the age where the trauma happened, emotionally. Um, and I think actually, you know, she probably needs to go and do some work on that, you know. But <laughs> this is my daughter. She can be a little overprotective. Put the knife down, honey. It just, you know, it doesn't take much for Beth to flame up and just, you know, go back. Um, you know, tenfold, but Summer doesn't know who she's dealing with, and of course Beth is just like feeding off it. Hope you didn't pay full price for that boob job. Actually, God gave me these for free. Looks like he gave me yours too. What was that scene like between you, Piper, and Kevin? Was there any levity in that situation? The scene itself, and it is kind of funny. Beth is brutal to summer. But we did have fun. I mean, Piper is a friend of mine and, you know, it's just all in the writing and we're just trying to just tell the story as best we can and do those scenes um, just to have a bit of fun with them. But at the same time, I mean, we really start to see this, the dysfunction yeah. in Beth this season. Um, if we didn't see it before, I think we see it this season a lot. Love you, Daddy. Mm -hmm. I hope you find a therapist who can help you. I hope you die of ass cancer. <laughs> What is the dynamic like? Because I'm just picturing you and Kevin in that situation. What is the dynamic like between you and Kevin Costner off camera? 
I see the little smile on your face. Yeah, no, it's lovely. I mean, I'm working with one of the great, like, iconic actors of America, and uh, playing his daughter. He's, I mean, I'm such. I love watching him, him work. I, I love his face. I'm too old for this shit. And I learn a lot from him as an actor. I mean, he's incredibly, um, he's incredibly still and rooted. And you know, I'm most of the time being kamikaze around him, but it's, um, it's a real pleasure and privilege to work alongside him. I think we all feel like that. This is the way. You know that, don't you? Yeah, honey, I just, I just wish it wasn't. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm from South London. <laughs> I didn't think that I would be working with such a legend in the middle of Montana. And now being the number one show. It's wild, actually. Um, I mean, this is our fourth season. So we've been doing this for a while and we have such a hardcore fan base. And then for these numbers this year to explode this way is just extraordinary. I mean, mind blowing. Those numbers are unheard of. So I don't usually pay attention to the numbers, you know, but uh, I couldn't not this time. Oh, that cheered me up. What do you make of all of the social media attention on guys like Cole and Luke being these on-screen sexy cowboys. I think they're as much surprised. Um, I think they're having fun with it, you know? I think what emanates from Cole is this sort of tough guy, real masculine, but, um, but a softy. So there's, some, there's a quality in him that I think women just go goo goo gaga, and of course then he's got his little toothpick and his little... It's like the cowboy fantasy. Yeah, it's the cowboy fantasy. Literally. Exactly. <laughs> about? Just cowboy shit, baby. I hope Yellowstone goes for a long time um, and we get to see the characters develop and um, every season for as long as we, we can, the audience still wants it, honestly. As long as our fans want it and people are still enjoying it and we can still make a good show, then I'd be, I'd like to keep doing it. But I think it might be fun to see Beth and Rip when they're like, in their 60s, <laughs> you know, on the porch, you know. I hope she's given up smoking by then. Mm -hmm. um, I don't smoke, so all of those cigarettes are all, they're all the, the herbal cigarettes. Right. So I'm really hoping, and I hate them so much. And he, he has it in the script, how, you know, when she's smoking and when she takes a drag, right. it's all written. Wow. And so I'm, I'm really, I'm trying to pitch him an idea of that she gets addicted to Nicorette gums, you know. <laughs> so we'll see yeah. next year if, if she's smoking or not. If she tries to choose happiness, if she tries, I wonder about that. What does that look like? But I, I, I don't know if that's entertaining. You know, I don't know if that's what we want to see from her. If a meteor strikes Earth tonight, it is me and the cockroaches running this motherfucker to 